the true testament of a player's legacy is not his regular season numbers, or the number of all-star teams he makes, or how many Big Macs he can eat before the game. A player's career, a player's status, and reputation is determined by how well he performs in the playoffs, when the pressure is at an all-time high. We've seen some guys with incredible breakouts, Jamal Murray comes to mind. A player who was seen as being very talented, but not yet there. That changed in the 2020 playoffs. What about the opposite? Conversely, we've seen players have complete meltdowns and collapsed when it mattered the most. Probably much more of those players compared to the ones who excelled on the big stage. In this video, we're gonna take a look at those players. The players who saw their image tarnish, and the opinion of them from the fanbase became quite negative. How's it going folks? My name's Andy, and let's get started. Danny Green and Kyle Kuzma It almost seems like every year, Danny Green crumbles under the pressure. He used up all his energy in the 2013 and 2014 finals, and ever since then, his performance during the playoffs has severely dropped off, at least compared to his regular season. Even in Toronto, where he shot nearly 46% from 3 during the season, that number dropped to 33% in the playoffs. With the Lakers, his reputation for underperforming in the playoffs still lingers. Not only that, but as he gets older, you could clearly see the drop-off in his defense as well. Kuzma, on the other hand, hasn't shown much in his first ever postseason. Granted, he's had an awkward career so far, going from a shockingly good prospect as a late first round pick and presumably becoming a focal point of the future to now taking a back seat to LeBron and AD. It's not a bad thing, cause the Lakers are winning. But through his comments and interviews, it's clear that he wants more. He wants to do more for the team, and he expects more of himself. The entire 2019-20 campaign was very uneasy for him, getting benched with limited minutes and having such few opportunities compared to his previous two years. Early on in the season, in November of 2019, Kuzma was asked how he felt about his new role, and if he was patient enough to slowly integrate himself on this new roster. Kuzma responded, No, I'm not patient at all. That's just part of sacrifice and trying to be on a winning team. Obviously, it's hard sometimes when you're a young player wanting to continue to establish yourself and see you measure up across the league. In certain situations, you have the opportunities to just play. It's hard sometimes, naturally. Kuzma also mentioned that rebounding and defense would be his priorities as the season progressed, but it didn't really look like it. His playoff run is, well, it's been pretty mediocre. He's playing even fewer minutes now, his rebounding is piss poor, and his defense is atrocious. I've never seen someone jump on so many pump fakes before. With Kuzma on the floor, the Lakers actually have a negative net rating, getting outscored by 3 points per 100 possessions. Considering how frequently they're the ones outscoring the opposing team, it's shocking that Kuzma hurts the Lakers so much by himself. This also leaves Kuzma with a questionable future. The truth is, he's just a leftover piece from back in the days when the Lakers were trying to rebuild. But by signing LeBron and trading a ton of young assets for Davis, they went from a rebuilding team to an instant contender. In my opinion, Kuzma needs a change of scenery, and it seems like he's ready for that too. Pascal Siakam Now, I don't like to use the word exposed, because that's a bit harsh, but in this case, Pascal Siakam definitely got exposed. In the post-Kawhi era, Siakam's usage rate skyrocketed, quickly becoming the focal point of the offense. This was his breakout year. He led the team in scoring, he made his first ever All-Star appearance, he made All-NBA second team. And on paper, the Raptors were doing better than ever, 
on pace to have their best season in franchise history. Unfortunately, when the Raptors played the Celtics, it was clear that Siakam was not ready. He had a horrendous series, putting up putrid numbers across the board and had such a difficult time scoring. I mean, fewer than 15 points a game, 38% shooting, 12% shooting from 3 while attempting nearly 5 threes a game, I mean that's awful. Out of all Raptor starters, Siakam had the worst offensive and defensive rating, a ridiculous hindrance to his team, who was way better with him on the bench. There was really nothing good going on with him. Compared to his phenomenal regular season, Siakam got completely taken out. Boston's defense shut him down and the man who was supposed to take over Kawhi's role couldn't do it. Shaq had a good take on this situation. In the TNT studio, he stated, Siakam is not a star. He's a designated star because Kawhi left. Ouch. Charles Barkley agreed and added on, Siakam's an all-star, so he's a heck of a player. But this is his first time in the Batman role. Overall, he got a heavy amount of criticism, deservedly so. If I were to name one player who dropped off the most compared to their regular season, it has to be Siakam. Eric Bledsoe You probably didn't expect Bledsoe to be here, but he certainly fits the theme of this video. Believe it or not, there was a time when Bledsoe's arrival in Milwaukee was met with high expectations. He was the point guard the team supposedly needed. A guy who can cut, who can kinda shoot and play off of Giannis, while not needing to control the offense. And ever since he came to Milwaukee, he's always had good seasons. Most of the time, he's the third best player on the team behind Giannis and Chris Middleton. But come playoff time, he always disappears. Not just this time, but every single year in Milwaukee, this happens. His numbers, his efficiency both see a drastic drop off, and in 2020, this was more apparent than ever. Against the Miami Heat, Bledsoe averaged about 12 points per game on a pitiful 33% shooting. Even George Hill, his backup, played better than he did. Both Goran Dragic and Tyler Hero severely outplayed Bledsoe. He looked almost non-existent. A complete non-factor for a guy who routinely records solid regular seasons. Oh, and let's not forget, he makes a ridiculous amount of money and is still signed up until 2023. When people talk about bad contracts that the team can't get rid of, this Bledsoe contract does not get talked about enough. He'll be extremely hard to trade if the Bucks even try to retool their roster. Uh, I guess he could just tweet out that he doesn't want to be there, and maybe his wish will be granted. Since we're on the topic of the Bucks, I gotta mention Giannis as well. Now, he didn't have a bad playoff run, even by his standards, he played incredibly well despite getting knocked out early, again. The issue is, it seems like every playoffs, Giannis struggles against defenses that know what they're doing. We saw that against Toronto as well, where they absolutely suffocated him. Every time he drove to the rim, the defense collapsed into the paint and forced him to take a tough shot. The Miami Heat's defense was similar, stifling him once again. For a back-to-back -back MVP to be hampered like this, it's kinda rough. While I don't think Giannis tarnished his reputation, it's starting to become a worrisome trend. It's still about his lack of shooting, even though he improved, other teams don't see it that way, and they don't feel threatened if Giannis takes a jumper. They certainly don't cover him like James Harden or Steph Curry. The predictability of his game has been figured out, and perhaps the Bucks need to rethink their game plan if they want to win the title. Kawhi Leonard you can also throw in Paul George and many other Clippers, but let's focus solely on Kawhi for a minute. I've talked about the Clippers' meltdown in a previous video, but what's been understated is how Kawhi's kinda protected from criticism, which is weird. 
can you imagine if somebody like LeBron posted a stat line of 14 points on 6 of 22 shooting in a game 7? He'd get absolutely hammered. Yet, when Kawhi has a terrible game, it gets overlooked. Maybe it's because he's generally a quiet person and doesn't draw attention to himself, so the critics are more forgiving. Maybe it's because we don't look at Kawhi the same way we look at other superstars. He's not a leader. He's never been the leader on any team of his career, even if he's the best player on the roster. He's simply a guy who's very good at basketball, and doesn't have much of a presence off the court compared to LeBron. Now, to give credit, Kawhi was amazing for most of the playoffs. He's proven time and time again that he's clutch, and steps up in the spotlight. Just not this time. He certainly didn't struggle every other game like Paul George did, who, by the way, already tarnished his legacy enough in recent years. But for Kawhi to have such a poor Game 7, it's pretty rare. But to be labeled as arguably the best player in the league, and then to blow a 3-1 lead with the franchise on his back? Kawhi deserves the criticism, and this knocks him down a few pegs. Which other players do you think have played well below expectations in the 2020 playoffs? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Who else deserves to be on this list? Thank you everybody so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.